Alright guys, welcome to our first actual lecture. We're going to get into the weeds with some R markdown here. Um, we're going to start out with HTML documents. And the reason for that is they're kind of the most complex um, because they're interactive. Think of a web page, right? So you can click on things, you can make tabs, etc. Um, so we're going to start with that. Uh, then we'll get into PDF documents and uh, Word documents at the end because they're real basic compared to the HTML documents. Um, so let's just dive right in. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we have our cleared out uh, RStudio console here, right? So we have our environment. Uh, this is our console. Uh, we have no script open, so it's just huge. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a new file. And we're gonna do a R markdown. Instead of a R script, we're gonna do R markdown. So we're gonna call this uh, HTML tutorial. Um, the author is going to be you. Uh, the date, use current date when rendering document. I like to do that because as you update it, it'll uh, create, you know, add whatever the date is that you generated the report. Um, as you can see over here, you can do presentations, shiny, which um, I'm gonna create a separate lecture series for shiny because you can make very cool stuff um, but it's kind of outside the scope of what we're going to do here um, yeah so let's click okay <clears throat> so first thing we're going to do our markdown puts a whole bunch of stuff in here <laughs> so everything under this these three dashes right there let's just get rid of this right we're uh we don't need any of that stuff so the first thing we're gonna do, remember when I talked about our markdown lets you do prose. So it allows you to uh, annotate your code very well. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to kind of make this like a guidebook and we're going to uh, really put a lot of narration in what we're doing. So unlike previously with regular R scripts, it's kind of reversed. So in our regular R scripts, we had to put hashtags to put code or to put annotations that weren't read by the R translator, right? So if we wanted to put, oh, here's a note that this is what this ch uh, chunk of code does, we had to put a hashtag first. Well, in, in our markdown, it's opposite, right? So we can just write stuff. So we're gonna say, this is a uh, tutorial. Um, on how to use our markdown for reproducible research. Um, so here we can type long passages uh, or descriptions uh, of our data. Excuse me if I have typos. Um, if I were to go back and fix every uh, typo, then these videos would be an hour <laughs> uh, without hashing out our uh, out our comments um, with the hashtag symbol. Okay, hey, just sent. Uh, so, in our first example, we will be using the tooth growth data set. So, and if you took the intro bioinformatics uh, course that I learning path course that I did. Uh, we use the iris data set. We're gonna use tooth growth. This is another built-in data set in R. Um, and it's about providing vitamin C to literal guinea pigs, not like people that are being experimented on, but literal guinea pigs, and then measuring how much their uh, teeth grow. So let's put that in here. Uh, in this experiment, um, guinea pigs, literal. <laughs> um, we're given different amounts of vitamin C to see the effects on the animal's tooth growth. So the reason we need some data in our analyses before we can start doing the reproducible part. So that's why we're doing this. Um, so now let's talk about how we run a markdown, uh, or we actually run code in markdown. So to run our code, in a markdown file, uh, we need to denote 
the section that is considered R code. So when we did the R scripts previously, it just assumes everything's R code unless you hash it out. In Markdown, it's kind of the opposite. Everything is considered uh, prose or, or narration unless you denote that it's actual R code. Um, so we call these uh, sections code chunks. Okay, um, so here below is a code chunk. So the way that we denote a code chunk in R is underneath your escape button at the very top left, we have these three little ticks. Um, it also is the squiggly line. Uh, I think it's called a tilde. Um, so we hit that three times and then we do curly brackets and we put R in there. And you see that in our studio, it changes the color of the background. So now we know that everything in this section, we're writing R code as opposed to uh, prose or narration. So we're gonna say tooth data is what we're gonna call our uh, data set here, or data frame. And we're gonna say it's tooth growth and see it auto fills um, if you hit tab because it knows that it's a built-in data set. And then we're gonna call the head of, two, oh, I called it two data, tooth, tooth data. All right, and then to, to end your R chunk or your code chunk, you just hit the three back, the three ticks again, right? So now you see that it's back to normal prose. And so the cool thing with uh, Markdown is we can just run this single chunk. We don't have to like run the entire script. So we just hit this little play button up here and it even prints it out in our R Markdown file. So you see that the top six lines of our tooth data, you see we have the length, um, the supplement, which is either vitamin C or orange juice in this experiment. Um, we have the dosage, uh, etc. So let's continue on here. Let me get this. Um, okay, so uh, let's keep with our narration here. Uh, so as you can see from running the play button on the code chunk. Results are printed in line where I get that from? of the R markdown file. Okay, so let's do some more coding here. So that's what you're here for, right? All right. So let's um, let's fit. Let's look at the relationship, right? So this experiment, they looked at the amount of vitamin C and the tooth growth. Um, so we'd assume that there would be some sort of relation here that their hypothesis was that increased amounts of vitamin C means increased amounts of tooth growth. So we're gonna create a linear model. So we're gonna call it fit and then use the function LM, which is for linear model. And we're gonna say that the length is a product of the dose. Right, so we look up here, we have length, which is L-E-N, and dose, which is spelled out in their data frame. Um, remember, you can always click on this too, and it'll bring up um, length, supplement, so you see they have vitamin C or OJ, uh, and the dose. Um, so um, this function needs to know where it's called getting the data from, so we say that the data equals uh, tooth growth. Uh, I think we didn't capitalize it. No, no, tooth data. That was where we saved it, tooth data. Okay, so then uh, we need, let's get the coefficients out for this. So uh, the coefficients are the intercept and the slope of the line, right? So that kind of tells you what uh, the relationship is between length and growth. Um, so if we run fit, let's run this real quick. So I can just run this one line, run selected line. Did not run. Run selected line. Okay, what's going on? Uh, there we go, okay. So run the selected line. We have this fit and if you open it, you see there's a bunch of stuff in here. There's coefficients, there's residuals, uh, etc. A lot of stats 
really deep stats stuff, um, but we're most interested in these coefficients. So the intercept and um, what it says dose here is, is the uh, slope of the line. So let's pull those out. So we say that B, we'll just pick a variable, um, is the fit dollar sign, remember that selects like a column, and we'll pick the coefficients. And then we're gonna plot our regression. So we wanna plot the same thing um, that we are looking at our linear model for, so length by dose with uh, data equaling to data. And then lastly, let's add that regression line. Let's print it actually onto our graph. So let's, we can just take this and we use the function AB line, which means just make a line from point A to B. And we put it in like that. We're gonna close off our parentheses. And let's run this section now. Beautiful. So as you can see, we have our length. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we have our length. Um, on the um, y-axis and then the dose on the x-axis. And as you increase the dose from 0.5 to 1 to 1.5 to 2, we see an increase in the amount of tooth growth. It's perfect. Okay. <coughs> Man, battling is cold, I'll tell you. All right, kids are petri dishes of disease and they got me sick. Um, so, okay, let's continue on. So, <coughs> one last thing um, that we're gonna do in this video here is um, we can actually add pieces or information from our code chunks into the pros. So, um, the slope, <coughs> excuse me, let me take a drink here, geez. Okay, the slope of the regression line is and if we put a um, one of those ticks that we denote our R code with and then we say R because that's the language that we're using <laughs> and then we select which um, coefficient that we want so if we look at B <coughs> excuse me geez if we look at B here we have this uh, vector that has two entries, one and two, right? So one is the intercept, two is the slope. Um, so we want to select B, that is our uh, value or our vector here that we're looking at. And then we want the second entry. So let's quick now, oh, knit on save. So I have to save this file. So even though I named it previously, um, I'm gonna say introduction markdown HTML okay safe so now if I click oops knit on save so I click save again and it brings up this HTML document so you see it looks pretty nice we have we're gonna make it look a lot nicer it's gonna be pretty cool um, so as you can see here we have our uh, tooth growth uh, this is the code that we ran so they put it in these kind of grayed out boxes the light boxes are our results from that. Um, you see that we have our prose or our narration kind of in here. It automatically puts our author in the today's date. But as you can see, even though in our um, prose or our narration here, we wrote uh, RB2 or whatever, that the markdown file just pulls that number for us from our results. So we have this 9.73, whatever, which, <coughs> excuse me, uh, this is nice when you're doing a document and you want to put the value in the pros. It's a good way to do it because if you have to go back and change something, if you add data, if you take data out, if you found your analysis isn't running correctly or you had a mistype in your code, um, then this automatically updates. And so you don't have to go proofread your entire document again and be like, oh, where did I put those numbers because they're not correct? I have to find and replace or do whatever. So this automatically uh, compiles it into the document, which is really uh, helpful. So uh, that's it for section one or part one 
of the uh, Our Markdown series. Um, oops, I'm, man, I am all over the place here. Hitting buttons I'm not supposed to. I'm coughing, hacking up a lung here. Uh, thanks for bearing with me, guys. Um, as you can tell, my voice is real deep and manly because I'm sick compared to my measly voice otherwise. Um, so that's it for part one. Um, we'll get more into the weeds a little bit, into more formatting to make our Markdown document look really nice uh, in part two. Uh, so I hope to see you.